what I'm going to go through um, are really these three points. So uh, understanding personas, um, which really is help, can help you understand who make up your community, who, who is there. Uh, then think through their pathways. So it relates quite a lot to what Tyna was just saying about you know the, their journey as they get involved with your project. Um, and then finally, a couple of slides at the end on how we can make that like, these pathways smoother in general. I should say a thank you to, to Kirsty because I've borrowed a lot of, well, she, she presented this last year and, and I've been heavily inspired by what she presented last time. Um, and so the big point here is understanding, how, you know, in the end, how you can increase participation in, in your project. Um, so this is sort of a, a key message that sits behind a lot of what you'll probably hear on this course um, and about, you know, how open leaders, we need to design and build these projects that really empower others to collaborate within these communities. Um, these inclusive communities. And I think for the context of this talk, it's really the, the point about designing these projects, but also um, to then really bring others in to collaborate. Um, and so in that sense, the I really like this sort of image. So this is a, a bridge somewhere in, in Vietnam. Uh, but I think it's a, I, the, the point here is you have to sort of change how you think about this. It's probably very natural to think, um, you know, oh, I want to bring people in because I need to get more people to you know, work on this. It's too much for me to do on my own and so on. And the point is you're probably thinking of the problem in the wrong way. Um, you, you need to think not about what they can do for me, but really what can we do for them? And that is the way, if you can understand that question, you'll, uh, you'll actually attract people in. And so for me, it's not just about thinking, you know, uh, I want to walk across this bridge, so I need someone to support it. But you are the, you are the big hands in this image. You're the one that's supporting uh, this community. So uh, point number one, so we're going like, to talk first about personas. So the point with the persona is to understand who it is that you're trying to support. Uh, so this, uh, it's really a tool. And the point is to, to come up with a description of, of a person that you believe will be representative of, of people in your community. So that, make it imaginary, make sure it's not, you know, don't, it's often better to make it imaginary so it's not too tied to someone you, you know uh, very well or, or yourself and so on. But also do think about how, what are the sort of real world um, observations you've had when you've interacted with people you would like to attract. Um, and so uh, the point here is you will use a persona to sort of frame uh, the sorts of people you would like to see here. Um, within a persona, you would typically put a few very specific details. So, you know, give them a name. It makes it much more concrete if they have a name, but don't make it too much about, you know, don't use your own name, don't, you know, avoid using a friend or something. Um, give them an age, give them some sort of convincing details, something like, you know, uh, where do they live? How, you know, how do they travel? You know, what, what are their hobbies? Um, think a bit about their skills. What's their level of knowledge? What would be their education and so on? Um, and so that you can really uh, understand you know, where they'll be coming from. Um, and so, uh, and then, Finally, then the last, probably the last two that are most important, think through what are their motivations and what are their fears? Where are they, you know, what, what are they going to be looking for to, to get out of this? And also think through what are their pains? So these may not be things they're con conscious of, but what are the things they maybe get frustrated with in their day to day? Uh, and what sort of things may they, may, that will they want to get? You know, is it maybe they want to you know, see their name on, on GitHub or maybe they want to actually, they, they really just value being part of that, that big uh, sort of open project. Um, and one thing to point out, you know, if it's hard to come up with the, these sorts of attributes for a particular person, it's actually a good tool just to check that you've understood your community. So going through this list, building this sort of uh, persona up, you should be able to do it quite easily. And if you can't, then it's a suggestion that you maybe need to, you know, talk to others, to reflect on, on how many more people, you know, you should uh, discuss this, the, your project with before you start putting it together. Um, a, a couple of times in this, I'm going to flash up these sort of canvases. I, I really like this way, this sort of way of thinking. So this is a, a canvas. You can you know, fill out the different fields uh, and sort of use this to build up what your personas will look like. Um, this is an example one that I used for the Remotely Green project. I know it's messy and I apologize because I have terrible handwriting, uh, which is why I'm pleased we're doing things online a lot more these days. Uh, but you, you know, the, the point here is, you know, you see in the middle that you've got, uh, you know, we've got an idea of who is this person, Daniel, he's a conference organizer of age 30. Um, uh, it's, for him, it's really important that he has a community of people uh, on his project. Um, and then we can sort of think through the sort of characteristics of them. Um, so uh, you can see some other examples here. Now, um, a really uh, crucial point is you don't just do this once. So this is a, you know, you often have to build many personas. There'll be many different people in the in your community. 
So, um, you know, on the one hand, you may need to think through you know, the student side of it. But on the other hand, you may want to think through, you know, maybe you've got professors that you want to involve or, or other, you know, um, uh, other types of, of person. So you will often have to come up with multiple different personas that really try and capture the full scope of who you want to include in, in there. And, and, you know, you can do it different ways. You can use the canvas, but you can also just uh, you know, write a, you know, a couple of paragraphs. That's easier. Okay, so we've got our personas. So the next thing you want to do is, is think through what will be their, their journey? What will be the pathway um, for these people? So how will they transition from, how can you encourage them to transition from just being a visitor to the project? Maybe you know, seeing a, a piece of code somewhere or hearing a, a talk briefly to actually getting involved, contributing and potentially even leading it. Um, and so uh, the point here is it's not just about bringing um, new people in, but really moving those people forwards um, and sort of leveling them up as they evolve, uh, as, as they progress through it. Um, and so, uh, you know, to go back to that image of, of, the, uh, of the bridge, you know, it's the same bridge, but it's from a different angle. If we look at the, the problem from a different perspective, um, by mapping out the pathways, the, the goal here is to understand the potential issues, the potential challenges that might make their, their journey you know, less clear. Uh, so in other words, sort of removing the fog from this, from, from you know, that journey, but also understanding that there may be different routes, you know, the, the routes that someone get involved with your, your project can be very different depending on how they first discover you, depending on what they want to get out of it. Um, so there's a really nice, there's another nice canvas uh, that can be very helpful to sort of work through. Um, uh, and so um, there are, you know, this is, this is often another good thing to, to uh, flesh out. You basically see the different uh, key sort of stages and you'll write out the different steps that happen at each stage. You'll often um, uh, want to think to, you know, is this a good moment? Maybe you'll have to include a bad moment. So this actually grows, you know, you can see this canvas is called the customer journey. This has really grown out of sort of design thinking for, for you know, building a real, uh, a very tangible sort of product, but it makes total sense to apply this to a community as well. Um, here is a, a concrete example of one that's been filled in. So you see the different colors in the different uh, vertical bands. These are the sort of stages of their engagement as they're sort of leveling up, getting more involved. And then you put the specific actions at each one and you have this sort of line. And the, and the point here is to give a feeling, okay, well, they have a positive experience, so it goes up, but actually at some point, you know, in this example, the traffic is bad, so they have a, a bad impression. So that's very sort of focused on maybe a product that you might have built, but in terms of an open project, these are the sorts of stages you'll typically um, want to consider. So, you know, to begin with, they'll discover your project. They'll maybe see a poster somewhere for an advertising event. Maybe they join that event, so they have this initial contact. Maybe they really love it, so they decide, you know, actually I would like to speak at a future event maybe. So they participate uh, and they sort of work down. So if they become a regular participant, you know, they don't come back many times, they get involved a bit more. Maybe they start promoting your event itself or actually starting new spin-off events and so on. Uh, so this is where they're moving into network participation. And at, at the very bottom here, they, they maybe even become sort of leaders within this, this community. Um, what what's, is important to stress, I mean, do this once, not just for one persona, but do this uh, multiple times. So if you have multiple personas, have multiple pathways, and even for the same persona, you can think of you know, what, what could be different pathways they can interact. So I adapted a, a, you know, an example here from a, a previous, from I think I just cursed these one of the other talks, uh, versions of this. So this is, you know, thinking from the, this port hackathon that I helped run, this is a typical sort of journey we've seen. Um, someone will, will meet somebody else that took part in the previous year. They'll go home and maybe watch a recording of that, that uh, event. Um, so that's the, their initial sort of contact, their initial sort of interaction. From there, they may apply to join the next year's hackathon, so they become a participant. And because they loved it so much, they, they come back the next year, but not just to participate, but actually to turn up in a, in a, in a sort of, um, as a more sort of a mentor, they're gonna help one of the other teams now um, to move through it. And because that goes great, they actually get involved, really planning the next year, you know, coming up with challenges, encouraging their friends to take part, really spreading the network itself. And eventually you know, this, this uh, persona, Carla, she takes on a, a role, maybe as a co-treasurer or some other leadership role um, and actually goes out and helps establish hackathons uh, elsewhere related to what we tried to achieve. Um, and so the last point on sort of this persona bit is, is sort of what I've said a bit so you already. So you need to um, think through these personas and the pathways. They're a guide for you to identify the potential barriers and then come up with solutions so you can bring uh, newcomers to your project in. 
but be aware that the, these solutions, they may change as, as these pathways evolve, as your community evolves, you may have to adapt both the pathways, but therefore also the solutions. And of course, the solutions that you come up with will and, and the pathways will be totally dependent on the project. There's no one one size fits all here. Um, and of course, the, the, the person that you're dealing with. So if you have, you know, for every project that you're involved with, for every persona you might um, imagine, and depending on, you know, how often you've done this, you may have to revisit this, you may have to update it, you may have to rethink it. And so just lastly, um, I have a couple of slides. I don't, I don't know how long I have, but I have two slides on some suggestions, so I'll go quickly. Um, uh, so just at the top of those sort of steps, ideas for how you can make your project more discoverable and improve that first contact. Think through how you're going to publicize things. So maybe you want to create some posters and you know, put them around your department. Another really nice one is put a call to action out within your events. So you know, get people, encourage people to tweet or, or you know, share what what they do, what they see in your events. Make sure your meetings are friendly. I, I don't think I have to say that at all to this community because you know, these are always great, great sort of calls. But you know, do a round uh, table of introductions or put breakouts at the end where everyone can meet each other. Make sure the meetings are at good timing. In terms of code, make sure your repositories are easy to get started with. So obviously, make sure you've got a contributing set of guidelines somewhere. Label, if you have issues, make sure they're labeled so that they're you know, very clearly, this is a good issue to get started with. Um, and add a, there's a really nice tool that can help welcome people in, um, in a more automated way, reduces your, your workload. And then sort of moving people down through this, this, these layers. Uh, in terms of the meeting structures, you know, at the end of the meetings, find a way to follow up with, with the people that took part, really encourage this Q&A and chances to work together. With the SSI, we've often done you know, uh, the collaborations workshop. There's always a, a chance for people to you know, co-blog uh, or, or you know, hack together at the end uh, and give an opportunity for newcomers to give new talks. Um, in terms of communication, so this is really important because you're trying to build a community. It's not just one person working on their own. I've always found if you have something like Slack, Gitter, Matamost, whatever you choose, have some way that people can communicate instantly. Um, and the really nice idea, I think it was Kirsty Stork last time, but she suggested that these, this idea of mentored issues. So if you have issues that are um, uh, labeled as you know, a good first issue, uh, also find people that could mentor that. So if someone comes along and wants to work on it, give them a clear indication of who can help them out. And I think the last point I wanna make is, and it touches a little bit on what was asked in one of the questions, um, how can we motivate people to work on these projects? Um, I think there's some really interesting studies that have shown that even as an employee, it's not, it's not money that motivates people the most. It's not having a great wage. The number one thing that motivates people is recognition. And so if you can find good ways to recognize the contributions people are making, to give them, um, to make sure it's clear, you know, you've done this and, and this is great and give them that opportunity, I, I think that really can build your project quite successfully. And again, there are some nice tools that can help make that uh, process simpler. So that's everything I wanted to go through. I'm sorry if it was a bit rushed. I, I sort of had this one little message at the end, which is that you can only make a watch from a bucket of gears uh, if you really understand each piece and put them, help them guide them into the right place. And I think that's the sort of metaphor for everything I've tried to talk through here. So thank you very much.